So for all of this week and next week, we are going to be learning about poetry. So we actually talked about poetry the very first day of school. I don't know if y'all remember. We talked about poetry the very first day of school. So one thing that I want to show you and kind of go over is we're actually going to dig deeper into poetry. And one thing that I like to talk, that I like to do before I read a poem, because I have a poem that we're going to read, I like to do something that's called the poetry basics. Okay. So the reason I call it the poetry basics is because these are the first few steps we're going to take before we start reading and really looking at our poems. Because before you really dig into your poems, you kind of have to make sure you've laid everything out for yourself and you've gotten yourself ready to start reading your poem because a poem is a little bit different than a book. So with my poetry basics, the first thing I wanna do is number my lines and stanzas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is number my lines and stanzas. I haven't even started reading. Actually, really, let's do this. Rewind. The first thing I wanna do is circle my title, okay? We'll do that first. First, we're going to circle the title, okay? Super easy, circle the title. Then we're going to number the lines and stanzas. And I know you're probably going to say, well, why do I have to number the lines and stanzas? You have to number the lines and stanzas. I can promise you on STAR and on any kind of test we take, they will ask you questions that say, go back to this number or go back to this stanza. And if you don't know, if you didn't already number your lines and stanzas, it is going to be very difficult for you to go back and look at it. And if you missed that question because you chose not to number your lines and stanzas, then it's going to be really, really sad. So number the lines and stanzas. So important. It's too easy not to do. Okay, circle the title, number the lines and stanzas. Super easy start to our poetry, to our poem. Then after we circle the title and number the lines and stanzas, we have to read the poem. Because before you do anything else, you need to read the poem. Before you do anything else, you have to read the poem. So if you don't read the poem, then you don't know what the poem's about. And if you don't read the poem, then you can't do the next thing I'm going to tell you to do. Then after you read the poem, you're going to circle the rhyming words. And that should be super easy for us because we have been learning rhyming since kindergarten, probably even pre-K, okay? So rhyming words should be super easy for us to find. We're gonna circle the rhyming words. So you're gonna circle the title, number the lines and stanzas, read the poem, and circle the rhyming words. That's pretty easy, right? That's pretty easy. So this is what we're gonna start with. I may add more onto our poetry basics later, but this is what we're gonna practice today, okay? And then we're gonna kind of think about the poem. So we're going to circle the rhyming words. Actually, let me put that in for number five. We're going to think about the poem because we've read it. We circled the rhyming words and we need to think about it. All right. So now I'm going to show you how we would do our poetry basics. Okay. Pretty easy. All right. So I have a poem for us. It is called Life's Not Been the Same in My Family. And it is by Jack Perlutsky. It's called Life Has Not Been the Same in My Family. So 
I'm just modeling for right now, meaning I'm showing you what I want you to do with this poem. So the first thing I'm going to do is circle the title. So I read, my title was, Life's Not Been the Same in My Family. Okay? Life's not been the same in my family. So now I'm going to number the lines and stanzas. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16. Okay, so I'm gonna number my stanzas. One, two, three, four. Do we remember kind of doing this? Y'all probably did this last year, right? So a line is each line in your poem, right? A line is each line in your poem. So I have 16 lines. A line is each line in your poem. A stanza is a group of lines. A stanza is a group of lines. So this group of four lines is stanza number one. This group of four lines is stanza number two. But what's a group of stanzas? A group of stanzas would be the poem. So all four of these stanzas make up our poem. So this four group of lines makes up stanza one, stanza two, stanza three, stanza four. Okay, so we have 16 lines and we have four stanzas. So if you're, if there's a question on the test that says, how many lines are there in the poem? You better not pick 18 or 19 because you numbered this poem and you said there were 16 lines. So that should be something super easy that we do every single time we see a poem. All right, now I've numbered the lines of stanzas. So now I'm just going to read the poem. Okay, I'm reading the poem. I'm looking for the rhyming words and I'm thinking about the poem. Life's not been the same in my family since the day that the new baby came. My parents completely ignore me. They scarcely remember my name. The baby gets all their attention. Oh, isn't she precious, they croon. They think that she looks like an angel. I think she resembles a brood. They're thrilled that she giggles or gurgles. She burps, they exclaim with delight. They don't even mind when she wakes us with defiant screaming in the night. They seem to believe she's a treasure. There's simply no way I agree. I wish she'd stop being a baby and start being older than me. All right. So now that I've read the poem, I need to circle my rhyming words. So I'm going to come up to the top. And remember, rhyming words always come at the end of the line. Rhyming words come at the end of the line. So I'm looking at family, came, me, name. Hmm, I'm looking at came, name, came, name. Ooh, I think those rhyme. So I'm going to circle those. Attention, angel, do those rhyme? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Attention, angel, do those rhyme? No. What about croon, prune? Does that rhyme? Croon, prune. Croon, prune. Croon, prune. That rhymes, right? All right, then I'm going to go to my next one. Gurgles us. Gurgles us. Does that rhyme? Gurgles us. Good. That doesn't rhyme. What about delight night? Delight night. Delight night. That rhymes, right? What about treasure and baby? Treasure and baby? Does that rhyme? Treasure, baby. No? What about agree and me? Do those rhyme? They do, right? All right, so I've circled my rhyming words. So now let's think about this poem. So if I'm thinking about this poem, well, I know that this poem is about a kid 
who is mad because he just got a new baby in his family, right? And he's kind of getting annoyed with this new baby. He says his parents, that's all they think about. Now they ignore him. He said they don't even remember his name. The baby gets all their attention. So, oh, sorry. I had something in my throat. All right. So, I'm actually going to write on the side because now that I'm thinking about it, I want to kind of write down what I'm thinking. So, I'm going to say the baby gets all the attention and the kid is left out. Do y'all agree with that? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you agree? Is that kind of my, what my poem's about? Is about how this baby is getting all the attention and the kids aren't kind of getting any attention? Yeah? Good. I have lots of thumbs, so y'all agree. All right. Pretty easy, right? This is pretty easy. So now I have another poem. Okay? I have another poem. So y'all are going to help me. All right. It's called My Perfect Pumpkin Pick. All right. Who can help me? What do I need to do? Who can help me? What do I need to do? Camila, what do I got to do first? Got to circle the title. Circle the title. And the title is, Camila? My Perfect Pumpkin Pick. My perfect pumpkin pick. Okay, and I'm going to use orange to go along with the occasion of pumpkins. Okay, Bella, what's the next thing I need to do? Number the lines. Number the lines. Should I start with five? No. What should I start with? One. 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 Two. Y'all count with me. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How many lines do I have? Show me with your fingers. How many lines total? Show me with your fingers. I can't see because it's glitching and it says you're still at eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you oh, see right it? now it says twelve. How many lines do I have? Mine probably looks like 21. I have 12, right? I have 12. I have 12 lines total. All right, now what do I need to do? Am I done? Ali, now what do I need to do? Read the poem. Uh, we skipped a step. Now what do I need to do? Oh. Circle the rhyming word. Dimitri, now what do I need to do? Search for the rhyming word. Mm -mm, not yet. Oh. I missed something. I numbered the lines. Read the poem. Nope, I numbered the lines. Think about the poem. I numbered the lines. Oli, what else do I need to do? Uh, you got to do the stanzas. I got to do the stanzas. You're probably going to say, well, why do we have to do the stanzas? That doesn't seem like it's important if I number the lines. It is important that you number the stanzas. I promise you on a test, it will ask you to go back to a certain stanza and reread it. And if you don't have those number, those stanzas numbers, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to do it. And it's going to take you more time. So if we go ahead and do this before we even read the poem, it helps us go a little bit faster when we're reading our questions because we've already done the work. Okay, how many stanzas do I have? Show me with your fingers before I have a number. How many stanzas do I have? How many stanzas do I have? Show me with your fingers. Good Ali, good Walter. How many stanzas do I have? Show me with your fingers. How many stanzas do I have? Remember, stanzas are the lines put together. The stanzas are the lines put together. And you're looking for the spaces. 
So if this is one stanza, if that's one, this is one, then that means this is two, and then that means this is three. So I have three stanzas. I have three stanzas total. I have three stanzas total. Now, Dimitri, what do I need to do? I've numbered my lines and stanzas. Now what do I need to do? Read, read the poem. Now I need to read the poem. So I'm gonna read the poem. You have your listening ears on because I will be asking you to help me circle my rhyming words. My Perfect Pumpkin Pick by Christine Riley. I picked a pumpkin from the patch, a pumpkin orange and round. It was the biggest one on the farm, the largest to be found. I rolled the pumpkin to my house and carved it right away. I filled it up with the candlelight and put it on display. The pumpkin, the pumpkin jack-o'-lantern was, was as festive as could be. I kept it out all autumn long for everyone to see. All right, so who can help me? What are my rhyming words in stanza one? What are my rhyming words in stanza one? Look closely at the words at the end. Look closely at the words at the end. Ali, what are my rhyming words? Round and found. Round and found. Okay. What are my, what's my rhyming words in stanza two? What are my next group of rhyming words? What are my rhyming words in stanza two? Someone besides Ali, I know he knows the answer. I know. Okay, Walter, what are my next rhyming words? Away, display. Away, display. Away, display, okay? And last but not least, what are my last two? The last two are a little hard. Look at the words on the end. Lantern. B long C. Nathan, what do you think they are? Can it be right light? Mm, no, remember we're looking at the end. We're looking at the answer three. Lantern, B, long, and C. Out of those four, which two of those rhyme? Bella, which two of those rhyme? B and C. B and C. So remember with rhyming words, you're looking at the end of the line. So the end of the sentence, but it's not necessarily a sentence though. So you're looking at the end of the line for the word that is going to rhyme. You're looking at the end. All right, what is this poem about? Let's think about it. What's the poem about? What's this poem about? The, the boy who was oh, trying Oh, Walter, raise hand. What's the poem about? Ali, what's this poem about? It's about a perfect pumpkin. It's about a perfect pumpkin, right? What else is it about? What do they do the perfect pumpkin? Walter, what do they do to the perfect pumpkin? Carve it. They carve it, right? And they make it into a, a jack-o'-lantern. So this is about picking a perfect pumpkin. Make sure you're muted, Walter. Pumpkin to Carve, carve a jack o lantern. Right. This is about picking the perfect pumpkin to carve a jack o lantern. All right. Poem. Easy. Easy. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Poem. Easy. Pretty easy. Poem basics. We got this. 
Yeah, we're gonna practice it for the rest of the week and we'll get really, really good at it. Okay. So now we are going to move on to independent reading. So I know normally for independent reading time, we usually do something that goes along with what we did for our reading mini lesson. But since we're doing poetry, poetry is a little bit harder for me to assign to you because obviously I don't have you in person, so I can't hand you poems. And there's not a whole lot of poems necessarily to read um, on Epic. So what I want to do instead is I am going to challenge you to do what I did during, independent, uh, during read aloud. So I want you to find a chapter book on Epic, a chapter book on Epic. And I want you to read the first or second chapter, either chapter one or two, and or not or, but chapter one and two. And I want you to find the characters, the setting, and the problem, just like I did. I want you to write about your reading. So you're going to read a chapter book, and you're going to write character, setting, problem. Easy? Easy peasy? Okay, not a hard task. All right. So 